good. That's good. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. All right. Wait a minute. We know him. Yes. Oh, y'all know him? Yeah. Look at this here. How y'all know him? You went to school with him. You went to school with him? What's his name? No, I'm just <laughs> talking about the screen. So, uh, Frank, Thomas. Amen. This is, look at this here. Lord, have mercy. God is truly good. Wow. Ecclesiastic 4 and 12. And it reads, Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A rope of three strands is not easily broken. Amen. You can take your seat. So this morning we're going to be discussing relationships. And what we want to look at today is what type of relationship do you have? Do you have, is you, would you call your relationship a string relationship, a rope relationship, or a chain relationship? You know it sounds crazy now? We'll understand it better by and by. And a couple of things that we're going to address is, what is a relationship? What are its dynamics? How to assess our relationship? And what is the standard model for a relationship? Amen? Now, by the time an individual, a man or a woman, is in their mid-twenties, they could possibly have entered into hundreds of relationships. Whether it might be with family, friends, co-workers, or companions. But the frightening thing about this is that they may have entered into these relationships without knowing what a true or quality relationship is. When I take a look out over the congregation today, I see some persons that are well past their mid twenties. Thank you. Well, Thank you. <laughs> Myself included. Which would mean that the relationships that you have entered into could well number in the thousands. Again, maybe not even knowing what a true or quality relationship is. Now, the consequence to this is what's frightening because only true and quality relationships yield a reward. Any other type of relationship, if it's not a true relationship, if it's not a quality relationship, it will be taxing on one or both parties within the relationship. And in this context, relationships are like mathematical equations. In that, if you don't know what you're doing, when you're calculating your life, somewhere down the line, your relationship just will not add up. Likewise, relationships are like recipes. If you don't put in the right ingredients at the beginning, in the end, your relationship will leave a bad taste in your mouth. And this is where many of us find ourselves in a relationship then when you think about it, you go, something just don't add up. I don't know what happened. Or you say, when you look at him, <laughs> he just leave a bad taste in my mouth. <laughs> so what we want to do today is, we want to take a closer look at relationships. Right? We want to know what are they? What are their dynamics? And is there a standard model that we can look to and try to be like? Amen? 
Now, here is Vanetta and and Mike. Eric. Eric. It's Eric. It's Eric. I have Mike. No, you have Mike. It's Eric. It's Eric. Eric. No, you see, it's Eric Mike. Yeah, see? No, no yes, it is. No, no, no. How you gonna tell me? I, I was one of the intake. No, no. We called him Eric growing up. Big, Eric Matthews. Yes, Eric Matthews. Yes. yes. Okay. So that's short for Mike? Oh, okay. oh. <laughs> All right. That's see, a, see, a, now, when, when, when you do the presentation, then you can talk. Yeah. I'm doing the presentation, all right? Part of the game is that. But thank you. We need to change that on the slide. <laughs> Here is Eric <laughs> and Vanetta in cartoon form. <laughs> Amen. So here, people have problems in their relationships, right? And what people believe that it's the individual issues that are causing the problem in their relationship. Y'all listen up. Y'all get this for free. People believe that it's the individual issues that are causing a problem in their relationship. Whether it's people, finances, or even the spouse, the spouse itself. So they believe that the issues are like forest fires that keep popping up. So they believe if you put out the fires, you fix the relationship. But that's not necessarily so. so. The problem is not the individual issues. The problem is that you don't know what a relationship Amen. is. Amen. You see, because if you knew what a relationship was at the very beginning, then you would have made the appropriate changes before you got into the relationship. Amen? Amen? Just like you go to buy a house. When you go to buy a house, right, and then you buy, just, you just go and buy the house, and then you can't make the payments, the boiler's blowing up, you understand all type of things has happened, and you're claiming these are the issues. No, that's not the issue. The issue is you didn't know what it took to buy a house. Right. <laughs> and what you should have done before was assess what it took to buy a house, yeah. correct? Because if you were not ready, you would not have bought the house. Amen. Or you would have used that time to prepare yourself, get yourself ready so you can carry the house. Same thing it is with the relationship. So here, if you fix the relationship, you will fix the problems. So what we want to do today is we want to find out what are relationships? Well, relationship is defined as the um, state of being connected, related or connected with another individual in some way, shape, or form. The state of being related or connected in some way to another person in some way, shape, and form. Now what we want to know is, what connects us? How strong is this connection? What is the biblical model for this connection? <clears throat> All right? So, what connects us? Now I need some volunteers here. Let's see. I need a, a young lady. Sister Samantha, Brother uh -huh. Corey? No. He didn't mean that. <laughs> he didn't mean that. He didn't mean that. He's scratching the itch. Yeah. Sister Tawana, come on up. Amen. Amen. Now again, this is a counseling session that our couple is going to see. Keep an eye on little Joshua for me. So I, I'm going to ask you all some questions, and what I need you all to do is answer the questions, all right? Okay, but well first got to ask one question. My wife, uh, sister wife, is it okay that I use Tawana in this example? All right, no, she, her arm is hurt. That's right, her arm, she hurt her arm. <laughs> Amen. Okay. All right. Now, why is this important? 
Why is knowing what connects us, how strong it is, why is that important to know? The reason why that is important to know is because over time, we build things. Y'all listen up. Over time, when you come together, you come together as a we. You understand? But over time, you grow as a I. But during the time that you're together, you build things, you build we things. You build children, that's a we thing. <laughs> you build house, that's a we thing. Right? You build bank accounts and finances, that's a we thing. Even the dog. <laughs> That's, 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 that's it. That's a weed. Who keep the dog? I get the dog. Yeah. You keep the bank account. <laughs> you don't <pay dog> support. <laughs> Amen. And that's the problem. That's what makes separation so hard. You didn't build up all of this wee stuff, but you grow as an individual. You see, who you are the day you met Sister So-and-So is not the person who you are 10, 13 years down the line. You have grown as an individual, but you didn't take into account to put steps into place for the us to grow as an individual. You follow? So you started as a we. But you grew as individuals. You got all this wee stuff. But the relationship is actually left back there. Wow. You understand? Yeah. Don't sit. Get her a chair. You be here for a while. <laughs> Lord have mercy. All right. So this is why this is important. Because something has to be strong enough to keep us together. Otherwise, all of this is going to fall apart. Right? Ain't that such a pretty picture? That's your life. <laughs> all right. Okay. I already said that. So, how strong is your relationship? Do you have a string relationship? Do you have a rope relationship? Or do you have a chain relationship? And we're going to investigate this. First, let's try the string. All right? Now, before you answer the question, come here, Sister Twan. Tie that string on one side, Josh, on your arm. Yeah. Why is it not going to work? It's what? It's too thin. Hmm? Okay, hold on. Okay, I'm holding. Okay. Oh, hold on. It's not coming in. All right. Come on, come on over. Now, Sister Melrose is here. So Rock and Sister Melrose will pray for Sister Eric. Brother Eric. Okay, you'll see this, right? This is the first one, a string relationship. Many relationships are string relationships. So what do you think a string relationship is like? Okay, it's weak, easily broken, right? But let's put some feet on this, right? What would happen if I turn and look at another woman? to go to school. I don't want her to go, but I'm trying to preserve 
Bob and Ray said, because I got to work, work on eggshells. So not to, and that's how the relationship feels. Like you just got to walk on eggshells. I can't do what I want to do because she want to do what she want to do. And vice versa. Oh, come on over here. I ain't get the... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Weak and it won't last. The ball of string, right, represents circumstances, right? Explain what will happen to the relationship when it runs out. In other words, right, a string relationship. Usually these type of relationship, we got together based on certain, certain circumstances. We didn't get together because of love. You got together because of certain circumstances or, you know, something went on and, you know, good times and, you know, you went to the movies and things were good and all that good stuff. That's the ball of strength. You got together because of, of experiences or circumstances. But what happens when the ball of string runs out? There is nothing to keep the relationship. You've got to have more in a relationship than circumstances and experiences and good times. There's got to be something else. Amen? Amen. All right. So, string relationships. The rules in a string relationship is no commitments. You know why they think there's no commitments? Because I can easily just break away. And if I want, there's nothing to keep me. And she's left there, or I'm left there, holding the bag. So string relationships have no commitment and no responsibility. They're built on circumstances. And the symptoms of a string relationship is emotion and disappointment. You see, because after you pop, one of us, at least, is going to be disappointed. And the outcome of string relationships is separation or divorce. Y'all understand? Amen. So let's try the next one. Let's try chain. Chain relationship. Go on up, sister. Don't do it. He said, don't do it. Uh -oh. Oh. I told you this is the one. <laughs> Just put it on. No, They're trick. They're trick handcuffs. They're trick handcuffs. You should have asked that before. What she is, bro. <laughs> Some people do that too. Say you got the key for this. It's called a prenuptial. <laughs> right? Just in case. Uh, Dad, you put on so tight, man. Hey. She's trying to keep me. Okay. 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 Describe for me the strength of this relationship. Strong. 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 Right. Amen. This relationship. Right? Controlled. You end it. So just because it's strong does not mean it's good. Just because you've been together for 20, 30 years. I ain't leave you yet. I ain't going nowhere. You should have known I'm coming back to you. You ain't got no choice. <laughs> Correct. Doesn't mean that it's good. What does this symbolize? Bondage. No, you say it. Say it. It's true. I didn't say bondage. I said bondage. That's bondage. Bondage. Don't some people in relationships feel this way? Mm -hmm. 
Uh huh. Yep. You're stuck. Yep. You're in bondage. Yep. Now, watch this. Right? Here, in this type of relationship, you set your own rules. I set rules because I'm setting rules for her. And she's setting rules for me. That's how you do. A slave master sets rules for his servant. So here in this type of relationship, you set rules. Rules that they're supposed to do, but rules that you don't do. That's one of the characteristics. This type of relationship is based on what? Control. Fight for control and revenge. This is why you stay together. You understand? How can I get her to submit? How can I get her to do what I want? She got to do what I want. And then, after you do something to get control, she plots something to get you back. And this is at this perverse relationship is what keeps you together. The plotting and the scheming and the fight for control is actually what keeps you together. You do things to upset your spouse. You purposely don't call. Lord have mercy. You purposely stay out late. You purposely will spend the money. I ain't gotta tell her nothing. Like Ralph Crampton. I am the king. The symptoms of this type of marriage is arguments. Distrust. Dishonesty, neglect, abuse, and fear. If you're in a relationship and you're always arguing, this is you. If you're in a relationship and you got to be running through his phone, you got to check his emails, If you in a relationship and you got to come home and ask her where she been, who was that guy you went to lunch with on your job? And you think everything is right. She got to tell me that her going to lunch with some guy is not the problem. The problem is the relationship itself. A lot of times, that's the, those are the signs at the very beginning, and they thought it was cute. Mm -hmm. Oh, he cares for me. He's always, you know, he's that attention. He give you all this attention, but you don't even realize that it's control. Mm -hmm. That was just the bait you in. Yes. Right. Lord have mercy. Mm -hmm. And then once he clack, clack. That's it. <laughs> he got you. Now he got you at home. He can pay attention to somebody else. Right. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Or she can pay attention. To somebody else. And watch this now. Explain to me what happens to the love when situations pull on the relationship. What's good? Look, look at y'all, look here. What's gonna happen when situations pull? What's gonna happen to the love? What would say, Sister Jennifer? Well, I can't put a strain on the relationship. You're squeezing the love out. Wow. That's all right. Okay. It's it's choking, choking the love. Out. Nice and loud. Nice and loud for Sister Eric. You're squeezing all the love out of the relationship. You squeeze all the love out of the relationship. Sister Tawana, how does it feel if I'm full? It's pain. When you showed the um, Pastor Ada, when you showed the picture of the family, I often wondered and um, like 
like when somebody been married for 20 and 30 years and I be like, how did they not stay together and they got the kids? And then when you put the family and what they, the we together in the frame, and then you had their agape love at the end, once it's squeezed out, it doesn't matter what they have there because the love is what bounds it together. Amen. And there's no love. And now understand that you can have all the we stuff, but if you don't have no love, hey! then you don't have nothing. And nobody needs stuff. Lord have mercy. Mm -hmm. I'm going to toss this one in. I don't even know the answer. What's your answer? Should we, because you remember like Brother Corey said, you got all that we stuff in the picture. Should we, we're individuals. We ain't no we. Should we stay together for the kids? No. 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 Not for the kids. No. What the Bible say? What the Bible say? What the Bible say? What the Bible say, Sarge? The Bible say you can't put it away like well, adultery. Uh, That's right. Stay together. That He's speaking what the word says. Oh, shucks. How we got this dilemma? How we got this? Sergeant Carter going to throw the Bible in the mix. Oh, Lord. You need to address the relationship. And this is where we're at. Right? Before you go and just leave or stay for the kids, address the relationship. It's the easiest thing to do. Because to break, you have to destroy children. You, who gets the house, right? Mm -hmm. The bank account, mm -hmm. alimony or child support. And, mm -hmm. and what they say, cheaper to keep up. That's for the men. Yeah. <laughs> Even the women say that. Yeah. And then the poor dog. Who get the ear? Who get the tail? <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. Everything. It's a painful thing to separate. The outcome to this type of relationship is violence. Broken spirit or hard heartedness. You turn cold. There's only one way to stay. You have to stay in this. So to stay in it and to survive, you've got to get tough, hard hearted. Or you become broken. And let the other person lead you. Relationships don't be like that. Oh, sorry. All right. Let's go to the rope relationship. Hold on, stop all of that now. Don't get it. Don't get it. All right. The last one. Should we should have brought a long rope? Yeah. Yeah, it's a little tiny rope. All right, hold that in. Okay. Come on, little, come on this way. The last one is a rope relationship. All right. Now, what's the strength of this relationship? Hold it up. No. All right. Well, each of them, well, supposedly had love, but you're correct. But what's the strength of a rope? What's the strength of this? Why do you say it's strong? Sister, command in the back, nice and loud. God is still the God in Christ is still the standard of relationship. God don't care if your relationship don't ain't working out. <laughs> your relationship is a manifestation of my relationship. Work it out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, that's the truth. Yeah. That's the truth. I know this. I know. I know. I know. I know. Yeah. If it's the case, I'd have left my wife a long time ago. She'd have left me. <laughs> Oh, sorry. That's a bad joke. You got to find a way or at least try. Right. At least give it the old college try and work it out. Because sometimes we'll say, well, you know, she's, she's mean, she's disrespectful, or he's, he's doing this, he's doing that. So he can just leave. I'm going to leave. I'm just going to, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm holy. I go to church 
and he doesn't go to church. So on that case, you know, this is just who I am. Well, God could have said the same thing too. God could have said, I'm holy and you're a sinner. I will leave you to your own devices. I will let you bust hell wide open while I just stay here in heaven. Me and the angels. Better yet, I will create another man. I'll wipe them all out and create somebody else. Lord have mercy. But what does the scripture say? While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And so, Christ now died for us. And as you re receive Christ, the love now can flow back one to another. But you still have your flaws. So how do you work this thing out? What you need is a conduit for love. Something that is strong enough, right, to endure all the struggles and desires and the fears of the world, but you also need something that manifests accurately the love of God. And yes, he now becomes the conduit. And when you base your relationship on Christ, eventually all of the other things the affairs of the world, the struggles, the desires, and the world affairs will disappear. And all you will be left with is Christ. Because he yokes the two of you together based on him. Let's close it out and we're done. You see, you still have your affair. You still have your issues. Human flaws, selfish desires, affairs of the world, struggles of life. What you need is a contract. You need a love contract. A contract that is based on Christ's love and the word of God. And if you base your life and your relationship on a contract based on these two things, right? If you stick to the contract, if you make your love payments, <laughs> right? then the enemy won't repossess your relationship. <laughs> and I want to let you know, see what he's saying up there? Please mess up. Please, please, please mess up. You see, because if he can mess up a relationship, he has the generations, your children, yes. and everything oh Amen. Amen. I read an article in the news in Chicago. 75% of black families, the children are had out of wedlock. 75%. There is a direct increase in crime and violence because these children have no fathers, no stable homes. We need to put an end to them. I'm done. Let us stand.